Hello, today I'm going to be going over how to call instances inside of Houdini and Solaris. So some of the basic functionality we're going to create is just dynamic pulling of point instances using this basic script right here. The benefits of this to other methods is that it's uh, it can run over multiple point instances, you can see up here, and it's also non-destructive. So here I've got uh, my base force layer, I can go ahead and prune them out right here, but then later on if I want, I can just bring them back. Um, and this all happens very simply, whereas some other methods are a little bit more complex with just within how it works in Houdini. So before we get started, I'm gonna go over the two different types of instances that are in USD. So the first type right here is instanceable primitives. And if, if you wanna read about this, you can go to uh, the USD basics instances. You can see it talks about it here. But we've got two types. We've got instanceable primitives and point instances. So by default, it's just that the point instancer and any instanceable reference inherits or specializes. Those are going to be instanceable, instanceable primitives, whereas the reference inherit and specializes is just going to be creating dupl uh, duplicates or copies that are not set to instanceable. So they're going to be the least efficient, but also the most flexible because of that. So setting instanceable reference is basically the, just the same thing as um, setting instanceable to be true with a configure primitive. So if you're using instanceable references, you also have a bit of flexibility um, compared to point instances, which are the least flexible because you can see you're actually creating um, all of them in your hierarchy right here. And this allows you to use a collection um, on them with the syntax and select them individually. So here, if you want to know more about the syntax, you can go to Primitive Matching Patterns. I'm just using this right here to select them by my camera. And if I show you what this selection does, if you go down to Collections and click this arrow, it'll select it for you. At first, it looks like it's not functioning, but you'll actually see that a lot of these are unselected. And we just see this force is um, the root frame is selected. So to get rid of this, I just add an exclusion of forest. If I was to reselect this, it works. So if that's an issue you're running into, that's like your case. And then I can just go ahead and prune unselected, uh, referencing that collection with a percentage sign to the name. So if you're working with instanceable primitives, it's pretty simple. And that's how you can use it. But most of the time, you're going to be working with point instances because um, they're just more efficient. So uh, here we've got a couple point instances set up, just a basic setup. And the method behind this is uh, first I'm going to go over actually another method. So if I've just written out those point instances to a USD file, and here you can use a modified point instances, and you just specify up here your primitive path to your point instances, and you use square brackets. And then within the square brackets, it specifies what instances um, or what points you want to. Uh, Iterate over. So in this case, I'm using an asterisk because I want to iterate over every single point instance. And I've just set prune to internal soft. And I've just got a quick wrangle um, that's using the NDC normal device coordinates and checking if it's in the camera view. And if it's not, it's removing the point. I've got my path a little messed up to the camera, but functionality is the same. If I was to write this up to disk, um, let's just go ahead and take a quick look at what that looks like. You can see here it is. So what it's doing is it's creating um, overs over my primitives, and then it's uh, writing out all of these attributes that we had before, uh, but just for the um, just for the points that we've got here instead of all the points before. So when I go ahead and sub layer that over, so if I was to go ahead and do this, so bring in the forest. And then copy this down and then bring in modified point instances. You can see what it's doing is it's just overwriting all of these values right from here. And this, in theory, is fine, I believe, but it becomes a little bit complex just working within Houdini because it's difficult to make this to work with this non destructively because once you've over overrode these values, it's uh, somewhat difficult to get them back, it seems. Uh, it's not technically destructive because you could just rewrite 
all of these values right here to the original values and then override that again and that would get you back to your original state but you are writing out some extra data here that you don't need and you're basically doing a lot more work than you have to opposed to this other method that i'm going to show you um, and if you look at the file size i've got a fairly small setup here just for example purposes you notice it actually is the largest file size um, by a lot uh, in comparison to the other methods so let's go ahead and go over the other methods now so this is using something called ID based um, instance masking. So if you just look on the documentation, you can see some of what that is here. And there's another page you can look at. Essentially, uh, I don't believe a lot of this is actually implemented inside of Solaris yet in the Houdini USD, but uh, it likely will be eventually, but we have enough functionality as it is using uh, this ID metadata called uh, that's named invisible IDs, which you can see here. So you'll notice this is an empty array, and this is what's going to allow us to be uh, a lot more flexible and non-destructive. If I go ahead and prune, here I'm pruning my bounding box, you can see that this array starts to fill the values of all the objects that I want to prune. And this is working on point instances, remember? And if you select point instances individually, the reason why we've got this whole complex workaround that I've set up is because if you look at this, it says this is currently only supported when pruning by bounding box. And this is a limitation, I believe, by Houdini and Solaris, not by USD. So it says currently, so I assume this will be supported in the future. But until then, I've got this workaround to prune point instances by a camera. So basically what we're doing here is we're just creating an array of IDs, um, which tells the point instancer to make them invisible. And if I was to go ahead and actually write out two different USD files, one with make invisible and one with deactivate and look at them here. You notice that um, they're actually uh, the exact same file. So they just have this array invisible ID. So I don't notice there's any difference there, even though in the USD documentation, it also um, specifies this other metadata tag or this other array for inactive IDs. I'm assuming this isn't implemented yet, but I'm not sure. And then, so, Using this array, you can see how we can get a lot of flexibility. And if we want to just bring those values back, we just uh, create an empty array over it. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm just bringing in the values right here. And then after that, I'm just overriding it with this empty array. And that's bringing all those back. So I'm saying, don't make anything invisible. So that's the basic functionality. And now in terms of the script of how we get this set up with cameras is this is really the first time I've used the VEX inside of Solaris. Um, so if you have any errors to point out, please do. So basically how this works is just like you would have a point wrangle or a primitive wrangle that's running over the primitive or the points of a geometry. Here we're running over the primitives of this um, of, that we specified up here. So I've specified two primitives. So we're going to run over these two primitives, I believe. So the first one I've got is the grass up here. This is a point instancer. But we're not looping over the instances. We're not iterating over the instances. So I don't have to add brackets and specify what indices I want to um, iterate over because we're just iterating over the primitive, not the instances. This loop I've created right here is where the looping over the point instances is happening. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm creating an empty array. And this is just going to be my invisible IDs array. I've just called it different. I honestly don't know why. And then in here, I am just iterating over the point instances, and I'm getting that just based off the length of, of the position. So here I've got 200 point instances, so that's going to return a length of 200 for that array. And I'm just referencing the instance or the position, sorry, of every point in that point instancer um, just by indexing the position attribute with the i value, which is essentially the point number or element number you can think of it as. And then I'm just, again, checking the NDC, that position that's in um, the camera space. And if it is not in the camera space, I'm going to append the point number, element number to that call ID array. And then I'm going to write that array to the invisible IDs attribute. And then that gives me the end result. And then it's going to be the exact same thing for the next primitive, which I have up here. So that's really all there is to it. And if I go to this camera. You can see I get the functionality here. It works fast, uh, plenty fast on the small scene. Um, I do get the error of read lock failed. It has something to do with how the cameras are set up. 
I was not able to find anything on that. Um, and as well, I am aware of this run on elements of arrays, um, where the array length is set to number of point instances, which I was working with at first, um, but I wasn't really sure why it was not working. I think it had something to do with how I was appending the, um, the, uh, element ID for the end of the array, but I was not able to, uh, figure out, um, how to fix that. So for now, I've got this working and it does what I need to. And that's all. So I hope this was helpful.